This is Raul Lopez, and you're listening to How Do You Say Success in Spanglish. The path to success isn't easy. For minorities and people of color, many attempt a journey with little to no guidance. Join me as I sit down with individuals who share their stories of perseverance so that together we can learn how to say success in Spanglish. What's good, mi gente? Welcome back. It's your boy, Raul. Still here. Can't hold me down. Trying to kick off this season two. So thank you for joining. Thank you for taking the time to listen in. I know I've been gone for a little bit. Um, I apologize. Things were kind of out of my hand. Uh, as life likes to come at you sometimes and knock you back a bit, uh, which kind of delayed me a bit. So for anybody who um, might have seen on the the podcast socials uh, that I did end up getting and having to have some medical emergency during the summer, which kind of knocked back my original intent of releasing new content for July. So just, you know, let you know I was busy trying to get new interviews. So I've had a bunch of interviews um, occurring during the summer, uh, some of which I've had to reschedule. Uh, and uh, But just to kind of get you up to date on me, and obviously I like to tell you and be honest about what's going on, keep it real about things. And hopefully learn some lessons through life. Uh, life teaches us the best lessons sometimes. So um, so somewhere around July 5th, I'm uh, sorry, July 7th, I started having stomach pains. Uh, it was funny because I was watching, um, you know, I've had had some pain throughout the day, but it was like shortly after uh, watching House of Dragon, uh, I was starting to feel like I just kind of like, Man, this is just getting worse and worse and worse. Um, and I decided, hey, I'll go to the ER. I've read lots of stories on Reddit about people who had stomach ache, stomach pains who didn't take it serious, um, waited too long to go to the ER, and wound up dying. So that was my initial concern. Like, man, I don't want to be one of those stories where I waited for too long, try to be tough and say, oh, I can't handle a stomach pain. It's just a stomach pain. It's just a stomach ache. Uh, but I said, hey, you know what? I think it's, I'm going to go to ER and get checked out. Um, as I was getting ready, you know, typical Latino, I go take a shower before I go to the emergency room. Um, and while doing that, start throwing up and realize, hey, now I'm on, uh, I got two symptoms. So definitely making the right choice here. So as I start getting close to the ER, things get worse. I'm in so much more pain that it's just kind of ridiculous. Um, God bless my wife. It was like one in the morning when she dropped me off uh, and came back home um, to stay with my daughter. I told her, you know, I'll give her a call if anything happens because I know how ERs are. could take forever um, before they do nothing and tell you to go home. So I told her, I'll give her a call if anything happens. So they... Give me some medication to try to get the pain, but the pain just kept coming back. They did a CAT scan to kind of take a look at stuff. And you know, there's all things in the hospital, you're just waiting, waiting, waiting. And then come in around, um, I think, three in the morning, I said, hey, you might have a bowel obstruction. Uh, we're going to check. Uh, you're you know, fortunate enough, the doctor who did my bariatric surgery uh, was on call that night. So uh, they were going to discuss it with him. Uh, since they know my history, to determine what's the next best step with that. So I'm like, okay. Um, you know, for people who don't know, bowel obstruction is when your something in your testing is intestines are being blocked and your bowels can't move and it causes build back up that eventually causes a lot of pain. So um, mine apparently was caused by my appendectomy that I had, which uh, I was 13, created scar tissue that I guess happens <laughs> when I when people found out about this. I got hit up a lot and saying, "Oh, my! I had that happen to me, or somebody else happened to me." So yeah, um, come back five in the morning, and uh, they're like getting me ready, and I'm like, "What's going on?" I'm like, "Oh, you're gonna have surgery. Uh, we're rolling you in right now." And I'm like, "Surgery for what?" <laughs> nobody really explained anything to me. And the nurse, God bless her, she didn't know what's going on. She was like, "Oh, nobody explained anything to you." She's like, "I'm like, nope." She's like. All right, they'll explain to you when they get into the OR. So they roll me up, doctor comes in, tells me all the wonderful things about this uh, 
ball obstruction that I have. Apparently, uh, they can tell that it looks like it's called probably from scar tissue. They want to go in there and do an exploratory laparotomy to make sure everything's okay. And that's when they come in, um, you have laparoscopy on your stomach, uh, and they want to just go in there. You know, their goal, hope is they'll come in, cut the scar tissue, unblock that obstruction, and hopefully everything will start flowing after that. So, um, obviously, they tell you everything that's going to happen and every potential risk with an, uh, surgery, um, as with all risk, well, with all surgery, there's risks associated with that. So, I had to call my wife at 5.30 in the morning and say, hey, I'm going in for surgery. I don't really know much about it. I don't know what's going on. They have, I have bowel obstruction. Hopefully, it's okay. Um, they'll call you when I'm done. So, Obviously, she's waking up. She's got to get ready, get my daughter up ready for, uh, for her summer camp and go to uh, work herself. And, you know, just woke up with a fright. Hey, your husband's going to get surgery. So um, I felt bad. I couldn't do much about it. Um, but they put me in. The first thing they tell me is, we're going to stick a tube through your nose. We have to put an NG tube. So if anybody's never had an NG tube, it's the worst fucking thing in the world. Um, they stick a tube up your nose, through the back of your throat, into your stomach. And it is horrible. And they put it in me. And I cried like a little bitch. And I begged for them to pull it out. Um, I thought they were putting it in to pump everything out of my stomach. Uh, which it was what it was, but it was supposed to stay there for the full duration of my time in the hospital for the most part. So um, I was not aware that I'd be wearing it for the next two days. So uh, two, three days, actually. So, um, so yeah, that was fun. Um, and then they put me down. I have my surgery. I wake up. They tell me that when they actually remove the scar tissue and they saw my intestine, that it uh, was already dying. So they had to remove about 25 centimeters of my intestine. Um, thankfully, it would not really restrict me, my, um, my uh, um, nutrition moving forward. So there wasn't a fear of having to do anything other restrictive other than having surgery. So it was just heal and move on and feel better and get better. So that's what I was looking forward to. I had this damn NG2 for another day and a half or so. Um, and it sucked. I couldn't talk. It hurt when I swallowed. It consistently felt like I had postnatal drip. And I felt horrible. I had this surgery that removed everything from my stomach, which made the pain go away instantly. And I felt so much better. But that tube sucked more than all that um, at that moment. So... It was horrible. So anybody who ever has an NG tube, you know, I feel you, it's horrible. Don't wish it upon anybody. So eventually I get out, moving on, minor restrictive diet. I was already eating solid food by the time I got out. So they was just really avoiding things like nuts and fibrous vegetables because you don't want fiber keeping in there. But it was really not that restrictive, not much craziness that they were giving me. So, um... I felt good. I started, you know, getting kind of back to normal. Walking sucked. Um, slowly getting back up to it. And um, fast forward literally about three days after I got out of the hospital, I started having stomach pain again. So here I am again, Sunday. This time I'm actually home alone. Um, thank God for my parents that came in and took my daughter to kind of um, help me, uh, you know, Helped me not have responsibilities while recovering. Um, and my wife went to work. And I was actually waiting to get picked up to go to barbecue. And I started having another pain. I was going to have uh, hang out with my parents for the day. But started having more pain. I canceled that ride. I said, nope, don't come get me. Called my wife. And she got out of work. And we both went back to the ER. They did another CAT scan. Um, and they said I had another bowel obstruction. So... At that point, I'm like, what the hell? Is this something that's going to be consistently a part of my life? Am I consistently having to worry about bowel obstructions? Um, and the doc, the 
I don't know if it was a nurse or doctor was like, possible, um, but we're going to go in there and do another um, uh, surgery in your stomach um, and try to see what's going on. Hopefully something minor, but, you know, they're, they're worried that I might have another obstruction. So here I am again, having to go in for another emergency surgery. Uh, thankfully, I was with my wife at the time, so I didn't have to wake her up at Three in the morning, so I don't know what's going on, but the the surgery, thankfully, they didn't put the NG tube in after I was already unconscious. So thank God they listened to my fears about that. Uh, I didn't have to deal with that wide awake, but yeah, so here I am, and second round, same hospital, same floor, different wing, um, and thankfully private room this time um but they were gonna go much slower this time much much slower uh it looked like the surgery they did initially caused another obstruction and they weren't sure why so they went back in removed the part they fixed uh refixed it with a apparently a bigger join um which the doctor said, you could eat a chicken bone and you should be fine. So, cool. Um, but they, and as well as myself, wanted to take things slower. I did not want to be back a week later. So, um, I spent more time in the hospital the second time. It was there for five days. Um, spent more time with the NG tube. They actually kept me in there for a good... Um, almost three days with the NG2 before they removed it. Pure, um, clear liquids the whole time there. They didn't even switch me on to protein shakes by the time I left. So they were going very, very slowly with me on all of, on everything. They wanted me to um, really be slow with everything. So I left um, the hospital again. Um, I've lost, I had lost so much weight, continue to lose weight. I think I looked, and I think I'll post um, on the socials and on the website a picture of how I looked a few days after. I felt like a cracker. I was, you know, I, I looked like a cracker. I didn't feel like I looked like a cracker, but I, my, my face was all skinny. I could, I could see all the bone. It just felt scary looking. Um, I felt bad for my wife who had to deal with this twice and had to deal with the trauma and the, the fear, um, while also having to keep everything up at home. Thank God for friends and family who helped with everything while I was recovering. Um, but it was a lot of, it was a toll. It was a big toll on my family, on myself. It was a lot of work, and for anybody who's been through emergency situations like this, you know, it knocks you down. I was expecting and prepared to have all this stuff ready for the podcast. I had this momentum going, and I think that's a big part of what I'll probably talk about a little bit today, but momentum killers really fucking suck. Um, I'm here the night that I'm supposed to be releasing this, literally hours before midnight, sitting here and just wondering, trying to get the momentum to do this. My summer didn't end. Um, by the way, after that surgery, there was more shit to come, but, you know, I it knocked me down. It knocked my momentum out. And I spent more time worrying about recovering um, than the vodka, which is what matters more. Um... Uh, I took some time out of work, but I couldn't take too much time because I had run out of PTO and I didn't want to lo risk losing money. So thankfully I work from home on a cushiony chair in front of a computer that didn't require anything physical so I could get back to work really quickly. But, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's been hard. Um, things were all over the place. I didn't quite feel like myself. I didn't feel like um, like I had the same drive at the moment. 
I kind of just wanted to sit down and do nothing for a while, which is kind of what I did. Um, I rested. I tried to recover as best I can. Um, things I took. I think it took me about two and two weeks or so before I started. I went from liquids for a few days to um, to liquids with proteins, and then mainly you know liquids with protein shakes for a while. Then eventually jumped back on um, solids after my I think after a couple of weeks of um, visit for my doctor, getting me okay to start going back to solids. So took it really slow. Took it, try to take it really really slow. Um, slowly building my way up to more bigger foods and normal foods and um i thought things were getting better and i thought hey maybe i can come back and get back to normal like it took me a while you know thank god for um this uh a buddy of mine Stuart, who owns a landscaping company here in uh um where i live who was thankful enough to come on my lawn for a couple of weeks free, you know, um, cause I had no, I couldn't do anything. And even after like four or five weeks of being out, when I finally decided to try it, I barely did half the lawn before I started feeling pain. So no, I got to stop. So, uh, it did take me a while. Um, but slowly started feeling better, started thinking, saying, Hey, time to get this ball rolling again. I know my momentum got killed. I got to try to go, you know, get this uh, podcast back on and get things back going again. And um, it seems like every time I thought that something bad happened again, because it was like, um, I had another day where I had stomach pain and you, you think about it. I had stomach pain and I just started crying thinking not again. I was scared to death that I was going to have to go back to the hospital again and have another surgery. So once again, I waited, pushed and waited and waited and waited, hoping it would just go away, go away. But it didn't and decided to go back to the ER. So here I am. This is literally about like, um, you know, my first few, my first week out of the hospital when I got out the second time, when I got to that following Sunday, I was scared shitless that something bad was going to happen and nothing happened. Then another week and nothing happened. And then eventually I let my guard down again and boom, I started having stomach pains again and it knocked me down again and I was freaking the fuck out. So we went to the hospital. They did an x-ray. The doctor said, it looks like you might have another obstruction. Um, let's give it a little bit of time. He's like, I don't want to send you to go get another CAT scan because we already had two of those this month and I want to shoot more radiation you that I don't need to. So let's give it a little bit. Um, thankfully by about nine 30, the pain started going away and I was thankful that it went away, but it scared the shit of me again. I went back liquid diet for a few more days. Um, and protein shakes again to kind of lean my, uh, wean myself back into normal food again but it was scary and I realized I wasn't really quite out of the water yet. um so now I'm, I live in consistent fear of something happening um with my stomach so which is kind of difficult because you still have the same hunger and you still want to eat the same food sometimes and sometimes I'll eat food then I'll feel weirdness in my stomach and I'm like what the hell did I do and I get nervous and I'm uncomfortable for a little bit and then it kind of goes away and I'm like okay I think it's just the natural progression of me healing I think this is all going to be funky for a while you know so long as I'm not in super pain again I think hopefully it'll just keep going the way it is so just got to realize I need more time so I tried to give myself more time um then a couple weeks after that my daughter gets sick she gets pneumonia so we're dealing with that, um, once again, I, this momentum ball, I just can't get back to rolling. I can't come back up here. I can't, as much as I love this, I actually had an interview uh, and I posted about it a while ago with another uh, podcast and um, with Asher Wright. And uh, I, I, I'll post a link to that as well. Um, 
And I I had missed it so much. And I was like, oh my God, I had such a good time that I gotta get back on this. I gotta get back on this. Um and I think that was like right before I got my, my stomach pain. And then a week after that, my daughter got sick with pneumonia. So we're dealing with that and, you know, just worried about her, checking her temperature. I wasn't sleeping because I was staying up, you know, me and my wife were taking turns laying in bed with her to take her temperature every hour because she had a fever for about a week before she started getting a cough, before we took got x-rays done because the doctors take forever before they even determine uh, she had pneumonia and then starting antibiotics. Um, and then obviously thinking she's getting better. A couple of days later, she's waking us up at three in the morning because um, she broke out in hives and her body's full of hives all over. So we had to go spend another trip to the ER. Thankfully, it went away with some Benadryl. Um, but, you know, we were at the ER from uh, three to six thirty. She come home to let her sleep for a little bit. So we can go do her middle school um, orientation. Um, she missed all her last couple weeks of camps that she had, her soccer camp. Um, and I went to work. My wife <laughs> drove to New York to go help her mom without any sleep that night. So it was rough. I mean, physically, emotionally, you know, just everything going on. And then dealing with my daughter was another hit on the momentum train, man. Not like you want things to go and sometimes it just won't let you. And so I said, fuck it, I have to give myself a deadline. I have to give myself a deadline of when something needs to come out because then I have nothing else but to do it. Um, and so I did. I posted, I'm back. And I posted that I'll have something out for the 16th. And I had every intention of having one of our one of my interviews that I had recorded during summer prepped and ready to go. But once again, life, life, I kept pushing it off. Oh, okay, I'll do it this Friday. I'll do it this Saturday. Oh, I'll have time this Saturday. I'll do it Sunday. Okay. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna go do it. I'm gonna go do it this week. And my lovely daughter, who I love to death, decided to um, take a nice bath and after a long day with some soccer and she wanted to relax and didn't notice the water overflow. And the water overflowed to the point that it made its way down the bathroom, down the hallway, through the ceiling of my kitchen and even all the way to the basement. So, um, yeah. Now I had major repairs to do. Um, this isn't even talking about any of the other physical things I'm dealing with. I've had shoulder pain that I'm getting physical therapy for and hand pain that I'm starting to get looked at. And now I'm here having to mop and clean and rip down the ceiling. Um, and while I thought I'd do a DIY, I had to get insurance involved. So another level of stress and a level of issue. So we have people here. So if you hear humming, that's the blowers and the dehumidifiers uh, that they put throughout the house um, to dry everything up before um, mold could potentially grow from the water. And uh, now I'm dealing with that on top of everything. A um, couple good things, though. I did get the promotion that I've been waiting for. So my first ever promotion, which was a nice, um, a nice boost, a nice positive um, with everything. Uh, and Tuesday, I go to Vegas for a work conference. So a couple of good things to come up here. But momentum, this momentum, you know, coming back to the theme of the show, like how do you say success in Spanish? And I remember when I was a consultant um, and you deal with different projects, and it's something you deal with all projects, um, you know, part of project management. You know, when, when you get a delay, uh, and something kills the momentum of the project, it's really hard to start back up, you know, to get back to that same momentum you were. Uh, you were. It's difficult. And I think that's where I'm at. I am, I am stuck on trying to get my momentum back. Um, you, you, have, you can still have motivation 
And my first episode that came out was difficult and hard. And each one was scary and took a lot of work and effort to go back forward and do the next one until eventually it just became second nature. And I knew exactly what I had to do. And I came here, I banged them out. My interviews were great. Everything was going forward. And I just kept doing more and more and more learning, being faster, being more efficient. It just became second nature. And then I got stopped. And then I'm here today clicking on things and I'm like, oh, my outlook is out of sync and I have to download something else. And um, what was the name of the program I used to record my video? And where was this? And how do I log into that? And I had to try to just starting this again reminded me of my first time doing this where it took me forever. And this is actually not even my first take. This is my second take because I didn't like what I started with because... I lost my momentum. I don't feel comfortable in this again. I'm not in my rhythm. Um, you know, even with this, when I release this, I'm gone on Tuesday. You know, I'm not going to be around to to be on everything like I normally am and get ready and prep for next week. And I think that's okay. Um, I think I have to realize, and I think we have to realize something that we're going to get these bumps. Momentum is really important. Momentum is really what's going to keep you going sometimes. But sometimes things are going to happen and knock you down. And that initial jump in momentum is going to, the initial push to get that momentum is difficult to get started. It's scary. Um, I feel like I'm afraid of failing again. Um, with this, I'm afraid of something else coming again and knocking me down again. Is it worth starting something if I don't know if I'm out of the, you know, I'm in the clear yet? But I want to do this and I love it and I enjoy it and I want to provide something. And I interviewed some great people and I got some more people that I need to interview and I got to get back to them because um, I feel like neglected some of the people that I haven't had a chance to interview that I had scheduled and I have more people to call and try to get them to agree to get interviewed. So I'm excited to get back, but if you see things aren't as smooth as they were, or things are kind of bumpy, the road uh, for me isn't as smooth as it was before. And it's taken me some time to get back into it. Um, even now I'm, I sat here for maybe an hour or two allowing the ADHD in me to just look at a blank screen for a while. I reset my uh, my OBS to different views and moved folders around and did all the stupid stuff I should have not been doing. So, um, but yeah, man, I mean, recognize that momentum is important, especially with things, um, with things moving forward. Um, trying to get back into your rhythm, trying to get back into your comfort zone um, that made things go smoothly is difficult. And as was all things, sometimes you just got to jump in and start moving forward. So that's where I'm at now. Um, that's what I'm trying to get back into, trying to get back into getting this thing back to where it was. I had lots of plans of stuff that I really wanted to accomplish this summer that I didn't get to. So I'm hoping to get there soon. Um, and I just have to kind of get back on this and keep doing it again. Um, but, but yeah, man, that's, that's me. Like with all things, man, keep it, you know, keep, keep your health in check. It's always going to be important. Keep your, keep your mental health in check. Make sure um, that you're, you don't let anything slide and that you're open there. You're willing to go get checked out when you need to get checked out. Cause it's important. Um, but then also, if you ever get knocked back and that momentum, you know, that momentum train gets derailed, um, it's okay. And uh, it's okay. You know, I, I think I just got to tell myself it's okay. And you got to tell yourself it's okay. You'll, you'll get there. You'll, you'll get that momentum back. Uh, and baby, it'll be beautiful. So uh, let's keep at it. Uh, I'm going to keep at it. I'm going to keep making stuff. Uh, you know, this was kind of a continual vulnerable aspect of my life um i'll probably come back at a later time to talk a little bit about my promotion um there's lessons learned from that as well as always and 
Um, but I'm excited. I hope I don't look it, and I apologize for that. But I'm excited. I'm excited to come back, get this started again. I missed it. I missed being. I missed interviewing people. I missed talking to people and putting everything that I've done out for everybody. And I'm looking forward to giving you guys more stuff. So I promise that there will be more. Um, I just am not promising that it's all going to be a smooth uh, start for me uh, right now. So I'm going to try my best. And that's all you can ask for, right? So uh, thanks again. Thanks again everyone listening i appreciate you sticking around and i appreciate all the people still listening and checking up the podcast while i haven't been doing anything about it so when i jump on and i see the numbers have still gone up and people are still downloading it made me happy i thought i'd come to a complete disaster so uh thank you all um appreciate it appreciate all the support appreciate all the concern and thank you everybody who helped out while my summer my horrible, no good, very good, bad summer um, happened, but I'm back. So, all right, man. Well, try, hopefully you guys get to join me again next time as we continue to learn how to say success in Spanish. See, even that was hard. All right, guys. Peace. <laughs>